Hi, welcome to the section of cardiology, the study of the heart. This is Dr. Jaitley. I'll be talking to you in this video clip. What is a plaque? Plaque is a result of atherosclerosis. So what is atherosclerosis? Now that's a long word and I think I discussed that in a different video clip so you can always cue back and read about it if you like. But just to quickly recap, Atherosclerosis is a process that starts at a very young age. You'll be surprised in the second decade of our lives has been shown to um, initiate that process within the lining of the arteries. Now, the arterial wall has an inner cell lining, and that cell lining can be permanently damaged by a cholesterol LDL particle, which initially is engulfed by the macrophages, our scavenger cells, our first line of defense, I call it, the soldiers that arrive to get this cholesterol LDL cleared away. But what happens is there are free oxygen radicals which will help oxidize this cholesterol LDL. And as a result, the foam cells are formed. So now the macrophages are kind of functionless and they go inside into the endothelium and damage it permanently. So once the endothelium or the inner lining of the arterial wall is damaged, that's when the atherosclerotic process begins and macroscopically it's called plaque. So the plaque, what is a plaque? A plaque it results from the cholesterol LDL oxidization within the macrophages leading to developed foam cells and then irreversible fatty streaks form and a plaque results. So it's basically on the inner lining of an artery from an accumulation of a lipid rich material. What makes it prone to have plaques? Well one is family history because if you have parents and grandparents who have had history of high blood pressure, diabetes, or premature atherosclerosis, like at an early age, uh, somebody died at the age of 45, 50, suffered a heart attack or a stroke, that should give an alarming uh, uh, to, uh, sign to the treating physician that there is some proneness in that individual uh, for increased atherosclerosis. Atherogenic diet. We know um, today's lives uh, are very busy. Everybody returns home late. On your way back, you can pick up a fast food, which is not good. It's mostly greasy stuff, as you know. Or you can open up a fridge and quickly rewarm a quick uh, uh, late night dinner, if you will. And those things are not healthy. So gone are those days where people used to walk to work, walk to the farms, walk to the fields, or walk to their offices even, or take a, take a cycle to, the, to work. So now today you can see people exercising only on the weekends, and uh, if they at all do. Otherwise, the physical inactivity is a huge, huge component to uh, lead you to develop atherosclerosis. And then, of course, the atherogenic diet we talked about. History of high blood pressure, diabetes, smoking. Smoking is a very important factor which is modifiable totally. If somebody stops smoking, the atherosclerotic process can immediately be checked or may not progress that rapidly anymore, So, which is great. So, But the bad news is it's hard to quit that habit once it starts, and as a result, it becomes very progressive. So many times the plaques can grow internally to obstruct and sometimes limit the physical a lifestyle to an extent that even if you have a fair flow maintained to that artery like here you can still have a decent flow but the lifestyle will be compromised like the person will say look you know I was able to walk 10 blocks and I walk five blocks take a pause I'm not able to go a flight of stairs but I stop in between and still manage myself and there are medications or whatever else person is taking to uh, you know regress these black formations etc but there is an acute process that goes on in sometimes in that same individual or in some individuals. And that's called a rupture or an acute thrombus, which is that these plaques, as they keep progressing over the years, over the decades, there comes a time where this plaque could be very brittle and it breaks off. And when it breaks off, it acutely obstructs that lumen and therefore there is no blood flow now any further. So now what happens is you have an acute rupture of a plaque or an acute thrombus we call it underneath. Why, why does a thrombus form after a rupture? 
Well, it's a simple reason. Like if you scratch your skin for any reason or say you bruised or while shaving, etc., you will see that a couple of minutes later, there is a clot that forms and heals that process. So that's external. Internally, it's the same process, but unfortunately, it will compromise on the circulatory mechanisms. As a result, what happens, the flow here is compromised severely because of the clot that forms within the cell, within the lining of the artery. So now, as a result, the flow becomes more and more sluggish, less flow comes out, less oxygen is available to that tissue till ischemia or infarct or death of that tissue occurs. Now, this is the schematic of the artery that I just showed you. So you have a fair flow where the chronic plaques can last for years. And here, this is a critical flow where it is critically um, compromised. The flow is critically compromised as a result of a rupture or an acute thrombus or a clot formation. This is a prototype of the coronaries. I just showed the heart because that's, uh, that's the point of reference right now. But the same arterial supply can be you know, uh, imagined for, this, for the brains or cerebral arteries or carotid arteries for the brain, renal arteries, for instance, for the kidneys, or lower extremities arteries for the, um, for the peripheral arterial supply to the, uh, to the limbs. So the same process that goes on in this set of arteries, for instance, the coronaries, will also apply to the other arteries as well. So the chances are a patient or the person will have symptoms from head to toe if the coronaries are involved in this fashion. If the plaque is forming, the chances are the plaques are not only forming here, but they're also forming in the brain arteries, they're also forming in the renal arteries, they're also forming in the lower extremity arteries. So the atherosclerotic process goes on in the entire arterial tree. It's not limited to just one set of arteries. So it's a widespread systemic problem, unfortunately. And therefore, it should be addressed systemically. And we'll talk about that in a different video clip. Anyway, quickly summarizing and giving you the gist. A plaque is a um, result of atherosclerosis uh, forming in the inner lining of the artery uh, from an accumulation of uh, lipid-rich material leading to an acute abrupt rupture or a thrombus or a clot formation. Sometimes it can continue chronically with a limited lifestyle and it's called a fair flow maintenance at that point. I thank you for your attention. Hope this knowledge was helpful and we'll continue to share more in my future video clips. Thank you.